Father, we love you. and It's good to be saved tonight. It's good to be part of your family. We're so thankful, Lord, in times like these, we have a Savior. We're so thankful, Lord, we can come to an all-knowing God. None of this caught you off guard. Lord, you knew all about it. You know Todd, Lord, he's your child, and we just pray that you continue to help him. We love him and Suzanne and, and Emma, and we just pray that you be with them. God, we pray that you just uh, be real close to him tonight and help him, Lord, and meet the physical need in his life according to your precious will, Father. And, Lord, we thank you for the good report you gave to our brother Rick Smith today there in the hospital. Lord, thank you for that good report and pray that you continue to help him. And, Lord, we pray for others tonight, Lord, that's going through hard places. Lord, some, some serious situations tonight. Lord, that you just be with each one of them. Father, we thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. Thank you for the precious blood. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for walking with us each day, Lord, and helping us through this life. Lord, there's trials out there, Lord, that frighten us if we didn't have a Savior, if we didn't have a comforter to walk along beside us. Lord, we're just so thankful for that. And, Lord, we just pray that you meet with us here tonight. Holy Ghost of God, we pray that you move in here tonight and manifest your presence. Lord, we just pray that you'd move in our hearts tonight. Lord, we didn't just come here out of routine, Lord, or because it's an obligation. We came here tonight because we want something from heaven that would help us, Lord, and help us to be closer to you and walk closer to you and yield to you more throughout the rest of this week that we'd be a brighter light in a dark world. God, we pray that you'd help our pastor tonight. Fill him with the Holy Ghost and lead him and guide him, Lord, as he breaks the bread of life to our hearts tonight. Lord, we just pray that you bless your people. We pray more than anything, Lord, that Jesus Christ will be high and lifted up here tonight, Lord, that you'd be magnified in our worship. Lord, we honor you. We love you. Lord, we just want to bow to you tonight and tell you that we love you and we thank you for all your goodness. Pray again that you be with Todd and his family tonight and help him meet his need. And we'll thank you for all you do. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We've got a great crowd. We're glad you're here. I want to welcome Miss Gail Walford. She was here Sunday and the first time she's able to be back from the knee surgery. We're glad you're here. God bless your heart. Brother Dale Gibson, about a three-hour surgery today to correct all that's going on. I think it's his left foot. Pray for him. Miss uh, Paula McMakin is here, and I'll let you speak to her, but some very, very sobering news from Miss Betty Smalley, all right? Miss Smalley's not here, is she? No, so we want to really, really remember her. We'll know more about her situation in about maybe a week or so, okay, brother? Miss Betty Smalley, very serious, serious concerns, all right? Let's stand all over the building. We'll sing together. Page 505, love lifted me as we stand. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me now, saying, am I love lifted me? To him I'll cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best songs. Faithful loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help.
you been lifted? Well, the world doesn't know anything about that, but you and I that are saved, we know a lot about that. Glad for his lifting power. Brother Petty, good, God bless you. Good to see you. Buried his father today in Blacksburg, South Carolina. So we want to pray for him. God bless you and your family. I'm going to let you shake hands. And I thought about Caitlin's here and uh, Malia's here and uh, Michaela's here. Didn't y'all do that trio last time? Well, let's recommission a second song, all right? Or the same song, all right? Everybody shake hands. Tell some of these people you love them. You're praying for them, all right? Everybody. Everybody. Let's have the ushers come, all right? Come on, ushers. All right, everybody get a dollar out or two. All right, we're not going no further in the service. Do you reach over and borrow a dollar from Dennis Mabry, some of these other people? So, uh, Johnny, you got a few dollars there, Johnny? All right, Johnny's got money. Jared, you got money, Jared? All right, Trey, you got money? No, no money? All right, you got money? All right, Ty? See, uh, what good are ushers if they can't give? I mean, who wants to be an usher if you can't give? <laughs> John, look, John's going broke. John's going broke on the front row. I love it. Hey, John, I need one, John. John I... <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little bit of laughter, amen. I mean, we need it. Dennis has got it. Dennis is standing up. He's ready to give money, all right? All right, everything you give, every bit of it. Last week, unbelievable. You know, we cut up about it a little bit. It was over $400-something offering on Wednesday night. This is for the young people. You know what our goal is? Our goal is when we get here in July that all these kids don't have to pay $185 a piece. So uh, we're just help. We're just trying to be a blessing. That's all. We just want to be a blessing. All right. So everything you give, everything you give, 
is going to this youth camp, all right? And uh, may God bless John Cudd, all right? God bless you. Play for us. Quickly, we're going to let these ladies sing in just a minute. Remember the June Jubilee postcards on the side tables in the front, and then also on the side, on the track racks, let's say on the track rack, I believe. Uh, let's see, yeah, probably on the track rack, we have all these brand new uh, Resurrection Sunday, Easter uh, gospel tracks, spring literature. They're beautiful, they're stamped. You get you some of these new for this time of the year. They're great to give out, all right? They're ready to go. They're ready to go, and so we want you to get some. Down front is a sign-up for breakfast sheet for sowers and reapers, the 13th. You'll see it. it's all self-explanatory. Put down there what we're going to church to take care of it. We're going to have a big breakfast. Sorry, ladies. Sorry. But it's for the men, the young men. I'm going to let y'all stay home and pray for us that morning, all right? Y'all pray for us. We're going out April 13th on a Saturday morning. Need every man, young man that's going. Need you to sign up. What your order is going to be. You'll see what I'm talking about when you look at it, all right? All right, come on, ladies, all right, if you will. Sunday night, April 7th, the baby shower for Miss Christy Bishop. All right, remember that. Sunday night, April 7th, baby shower for Miss Christy Bishop. Y'all ready? Come on. Yeah. Oh, I need Jesus to care.
feel myself stumble neath my load of care. But then I ask him this question, oh my Lord, how long? Then I hear his voice whisper, 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 soon you'll be Carry me through a long life's journey. You need him too. And when you're in trouble, what to do? Just call on Jesus. Amen. Aren't you glad we realize that? And we do. I want you to take your Bibles, please, just for a little bit. The Lord willing, we're going to go to the epistle of 2 John. The epistle of 2 John. You know there's 1 John, five books. 2 John is one chapter. 3 John is one chapter. Then the book of Jude and then the book of Revelation. So I hope you'll follow with me tonight in the epistle of 2 John. Great supper. I hope you enjoyed the supper. Appreciate all the work and labor. And even the, even the people that clean the dishes up. Thank you. We appreciate it. I want you to know we appreciate it. I probably got spaghetti on my shirt. Uh, I was in a rush because I knew I'd be leaving. So I took some ice and tried to get it off, but it didn't get all the way off. But I really don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I didn't come to worry about what I look like. Amen. And I care a little bit, but I can't help it if I got spaghetti on my clothes. It was good while it was getting on my clothes. Most of it got in my mouth. <laughs> Amen. Appreciate all of you coming to church. I think we have more here tonight than we had Sunday. <laughs> what happened? I don't understand it. But we're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. I mean it. We're glad you're here. Appreciate you being here. Michael Archer, thank you for being here. Just remember this, the brother's going to be building a deck, is that right, a deck, and needs some help, okay? When, when are you going to start on the project? As soon as possible. As soon as possible, all right. So if you have some skills in that uh, line of work, carpentry, building a deck, you can see Michael Archer, he'd be more than glad to, uh, you to help him to uh, get that project complete and finished. <laughs> Second John. I read today, Brother Ben, where one commentator said that it's probably one of the forgotten books of the Bible. Very rarely do people preach from this book. Miss Laura, very rarely do people teach from this book. But yet it's included in our Bible. And so therefore... It's God's word. Now, I'm starting slow on purpose. Second John is written by John as the elder and is written to a Christian lady, okay? Written to a Christian lady. In this epistle of 13 verses, he is giving a warning giving a warning against extending indiscriminate hospitality to traveling teachers and missionaries and preachers whose soundness in the Christian faith was questionable, especially to the degree of denying the deity of Jesus Christ. 
I want to show you what he said in verse 10. Look at verse 10. If there, this is John talking, and we've used this verse before, Dr. Love. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. And by the way, I think that's for the Mormons and the JWs. Neither bid him Godspeed. Can I, can I preach that right there? Watch it. Don't give him an entrance and don't give him any encouragement. Write that down. That's your outline right for that anyway. No entrance and no encouragement. You think I'm going to stand on my porch to a Jehovah's Witness that denies a literal hell, denies the deity of Jesus Christ? Think I'm going to stand on the porch and, and, and tell Mormons, may God bless you today. I'm not going to bid him Godspeed. I'm going to stand my ground and give him the truth, amen. But we're not going to offer him any entrance. We're not going to offer him any encouragement. And so John here is talking to this Christian lady, and he's saying, don't offer them these things that are bringing this false doctrine. So you see, in the early church, Brother Ellis, they were known to be hospitable. Can I get an amen right there? Hospitable to traveling itinerant evangelists and missionaries and teachers. And Brother Kyle, they would actually open up their homes. Open up their home. By the way, that's about unheard of anymore. They'd actually open up their homes to these traveling missionaries and preachers. But the whole epistle, uh, Brother Chris Madden, is an injunction to be very, very careful at what people you receive into your home. That's what the epistle's about. But that's not what I'm going to preach tonight. Look at verse number one. The elder, this is John, unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. Now here's where I want to come from tonight. Listen to this. John said, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. Just by way of comparison, look at the epistle of 3 John, one page over, verse number three. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. If you'll take a pen, go back to 2 John verse 4, it says, thy children, but in 3 John verse 4, it says, my children. Many believe, Brother Randy, that John writing to Gaius in 3 John is referring to those that he won in the faith, such as was Timothy, his son in the faith. And that's why he said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children, John's children, walk in truth. But again, I'm not preaching from 3 John. I want to preach out of 2 John. And Brother Johnson, 2 John, you have a lady that has children that are doing the very thing that she desires for them to do with all of her heart. And that is, Miss Pam, to walk in truth. And I want to say a word to the parents of Mountain View Baptist Church tonight. Is everybody listening? If my heart is right, and your heart is right, and I think if we're in fellowship with the Lord, there is absolutely no greater desire no greater prayer, no greater longing than to realize and know that your children are growing up and walking in truth. And I don't know where to go with all this. I really don't know which way I'm going yet, but if there is one of you in this building, if there's one of you that can come to me after church, meet me in the study, and present to me something that is more meaningful, that would carry more gravity and more weight than your children walking in truth, then I would sure like to know what that is. 
Brother Ben, I, I, I just, I just, I, I, I don't, I don't know what, what better, what better goal. I, I don't know what better prayer to pray. I, I don't know, Brother Derek, what could be a more of a motivating factor than to have said about your children and my children that they're walking in truth. What a testimony. Somebody say amen. What a testimony. Somebody said that, that, um, that this lady, and, and the elect lady, it, somebody said that she favored truth. I would say amen to that. She favored truth. Well, Brother Galloway, I want to submit to you, she followed truth. Now hold on, everybody. And that was she favored. And that was she followed. Guess what? It got a hold of her own children. And they emulated and copied what mom and dad had put before them. I, I challenge this church tonight. I challenge the grandparents in this building tonight. And, and the parents in this building, if, 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 if there's anything greater, if there's anything more important, tell me what it is. Somebody, somebody tell me what it is. What, what is a, a beauty contest? Really? A beauty pageant? Really? A 12-point buck? Really? A 12-pound bass? Really? A basketball game where they scored 40, really? A volleyball game where they had a complete shutout? That, that would carry more gravity? That would carry more weight than all of our children walking in truth? I say absolutely not. Absolutely not. It ought to be your prayer. It ought to be your dream. It ought to be your longing. It ought to be your motivation. It ought to be your aim and your goal. And by the way, if we don't have any goals, we're not going to hit nothing. Amen. It ought to be our goal, our aim. It ought to be everything our life is about. I said it ought to be everything that our life is about. That when it's all said and done, and at the end of the day, it can be said that we have children that walk in truth. Look in verse 4. John said in verse number four, I rejoice greatly. He didn't say I rejoiced a little bit. I didn't rejoice on an average scale. I rejoice greatly. When? When I found that I found of thy children walking in truth. Now, I want to ask you a question, church. How did he find that out? How did he find that out? So you know what conjecture is, Brother Bill? Conjecture says that he had visited her home. Mr. Man is that he had witnessed with his own, own eyes and been in her home and said, you know what? I've been around your family. I've been around your offspring. I've been around your children. Y'all gonna help me tonight? You gonna let me do y'all gonna let me pull the train by myself? I don't want to pull it by I'm tired. I don't pull it by myself. Stay with me, okay? It's it's very possible, Brother Ivester, that he had been in her home. He had watched their conduct. Brother Mark, he had watched their behavior. He had watched their demeanor. He had watched their spirit. He had, he had had ample opportunity to witness what kind of life they were living. And you know what he said? It brought cheer. It brought rejoicing. I'd say, Brother Trey, it brought thanksgiving. It brought praise on his lips. Why? Because he saw this lady's children were doing the very thing that young people need to do, and that is to walk in truth. I'm probably going to make some people mad tonight. It's not my goal. It's not my goal, but I want to tell you something, friend. If the greatest care you have if the greatest, I don't care who it makes mad. If the greatest care you have is that your child's a beauty queen and you've got your priorities wrong. You've got your priorities wrong. If the greatest care you, if the greatest concern you have, the greatest concern you have is that your child will be popular and you've got your priorities wrong. 
the greatest concern that you have is that your child will have so many likes on social media, then I want to say to you tonight, your priorities are all wrong. If, if the greatest concern that you have in your life is that your child would, would, would excel above his peers in academics or excel above his peers in, in athleticism or uh, excel in, in his peers, you know, you know, if they're not homecoming queen, if they're not homecoming king, and, and what's life worth? And it's all vain and it's all empty. I say, Tommy Rock on all that. That's not what's important. That's not what God's looking looking for. That's not what the parents of Mountain View Baptist Church ought to be looking for. I tell you what ought to be your prayer. I tell you what ought to be the fire of your soul and the zeal of your life and that you'd produce a young man and you'd produce a young lady and we'd have some grandchildren. I said some grandchildren I'd grow up and walk in truth. In other words, live by the Bible, live for the Bible and live for Jesus Christ and let the world go by. It's not about popularity. I said it's not about popularity. It's not about popularity. It's about the power of God in their life. Let me say this to you. I can't prove it. I can't prove it. But I'm going I'm to lean hard this way. I'm going to lean real hard. You know why them children walked in truth? You know why? Because their parents walked in truth. It's a learned behavior. It's a learned behavior. Did you have children? just so they'd be liked in this world. And I'll tell you one, I'll tell you something else. I'm gonna serve notice on this congregation. I'm declaring war on social media. And it's probably gonna make some adults mad what I'm about to say. I don't have any. Throw me a phone, somebody. Throw me a phone. Flip it up here. Thank you. I won't hurt it. I won't do nothing to it. Now, you listen to me. You listen. I just thought about this today. So simple. So simple. Click. I just took a what? Say that word again. There you have it. That's it. That's all this world cares about. That's all this world cares about. Ain't nobody going to stop it. Ain't nobody going to stop it. Ain't nobody going to do something about it. Everybody's just going to let it all happen because we, we, we want to make sure our child gets enough likes. We want to make sure our child gets accepted. We want to make sure our child's in, in with the in crowd. Who cares about the doggone in crowd? I'd rather be in that crowd. I'd rather be in that crowd. The very, the very thought of a selfie. Did you see the word? Selfie. This world's wrapped up in it. Hey, hey, let me say this. This world's drunk on it. I said they're drunk on it. That's what I said. They're drunk on it. They're eat up with it. They're eat up with it. I mean, just eat up with it. Can't go a day. Can't go a day without posting something on social media. Not one stinking day, not one day can people go without making sure everybody knows what they're doing on social media. Ain't nobody reading their Bible. Ain't nobody praying. Ain't nobody separating. Ain't nobody giving nothing up. Ain't nobody getting full of the Holy Ghost. Everybody's wrapped up in self. Self, 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 self. Most people, most people would have, would, would, would have withdrawal symptoms if they were forced to give up social media.
preach my heart out of rhythm, but I don't care. You can tell I'm bothered. You sure can. You sure can. I wonder what parents want in this day and hour. I wonder what we're willing, how far we're willing to go. I wonder what we really want out of our kids. I wonder what we really want out of our grandkids. And I have five, what do I have five, six? Well, we got five, six on the six one on the way. What do I really want out of them? Ballerinas? No. Leotards? No. Dancing queens? No. Beauty pageants? No. No. Yoga? No. No. Athletes? No. Not necessarily? No. Well, what do you want out of them? Can somebody grow up, please, and love Jesus? Can somebody grow up and love the Bible? Hold on to your hat. Can somebody grow up and stay in this kind of a church? Please, can somebody stay in this church? Can somebody like this kind of a church? Can somebody love this kind of a church? Can somebody testify in this kind of a church? Can somebody live their life because they enjoy being in this kind of a church? Tell me why our young people have to grow up and leave. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why do they have to grow up and leave? Is that what we want? Is that what we're trying to do? Is that what we're trying to produce? So we all shout too much around there. Hallelujah, I'm glad we shout. Listen, and we're not changing that. It's too loud. We're not changing that. I'm coming to church. I didn't come to the mortuary. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm not ashamed of it. And it don't embarrass me. It don't embarrass me. And my kids are grown, but if Piper ever grows up and drinks some little noggin, not a head little old boy, and he, she's got to apologize for her church and her grandpa preaches at her because it's too lively and too loud and too many amens, I'll tell little Miss Piper, you dump him. He's soaring a box of rocks. He's soaring a box of rocks. Leave him alone. Poke him in the eye. Pop him upside the head. Get rid of him fast as you can. Get rid of him. Sad day when our young people got to apologize for old time worship. Sad day when our young people are ashamed to bring their days because they might get a little loud in the house of God. I'm not saying that's going on, but I'm doing some preventive maintenance right now. I don't want it going on. I don't want it going on. Some of your children, they go to bed with their phone. They wake up with their phone. They ride down the road with their phone. They're at the supper table on their phone. They're stuck in Facebook. They're stuck on Twitter. They're stuck on, uh, uh, what's that other one? Help me with the other one. Twitter, Facebook. Come on, what's the rest of them? Uh, FaceTime, all that other nonsense. Somebody, I'm missing one of them. What is it? Insta, oh yeah, that old insta, that's why it's called instant. They can do things and it disappears in about 20 seconds. God have mercy. Can't talk to your kid. As soon as he gets out in the car, he's got his face in his phone. As soon as he gets to the supper table, he's got his earbuds in and he's got his face in the phone. What are you raising? What are you raising, Fred? What are you, ra- what are you allowing? What do you keep on allowing where you live? I said, what do you allow where you live? You put that phone down, it's supper time. You put that phone down, your mama's talking to you. Your daddy's talking to you. Look up here, pay attention like you got some sense. Put that doggone phone down. You don't have to text another person. Your daddy's talking to you. Your mama's talking to you. Act like you got some sense before you get a whipping. Say amen. Let me tell you what's going on. Let me tell you what's going on. Too soft, too soft, too soft. Parents are too soft, too soft, too soft. You're letting too much go on. You're letting little brats run the house. Letting little brats run the house. Brats don't run houses. Amen. Brats are not supposed to raise, run, run the house. Kids don't make decisions. I said kids don't make decisions. Kids don't rule nothing. 
kids keep their room clean, their mouths shut. They do their homework and they say yes sir and no sir and yes ma'am and no ma'am and they look at you when you're talking to them. They look at you when you're talking to them. Oh man, he's, he got all upset. I know that wasn't of the Holy Ghost. It was all you could handle, I can tell you that. Youth choir gets up service after service after service after service after service after service and not one among them, not one among them, not one among them could ever volunteer and say, before we sing, I'd like to say something. It don't matter to you? It don't matter? It don't matter to you? It don't matter to nobody? It matters to me. So you're calling out our kids. I'm calling out all of them. All of them. Yours, mine, and Aunt Susie's. I'm calling out everybody's. Service after service after service after service. You know what I told my wife though? You know what I told my wife? Bless her heart, she's got to hear all this. Pray for her. Somebody help me. So I wouldn't live with you. I know you wouldn't. You probably couldn't. Too grouchy most of the time. Say amen, Lynn. Go ahead, I don't care. I don't care right now. I just don't care. Say amen, I don't care. Do you know what I told my wife? I said, why should we expect more out of them kids? We're not seeing it out of mom and dad. We're not hearing nothing out of you ladies and you men either. Service after service after service after service. You're letting a handful get all the praise. You're letting a handful get all the worship. You're letting a handful get involved. You just sit back and sit back and sit back and sit back and sit back. And say, oh yeah, I love that church. That's my church. That's my crowd. That's my church. Then how about getting involved once in a while? Let's, 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 let's do this, all right? Let's not put too many demands on our kids. Let's not, let's, not, let's not raise the bar. Let's not raise the bar too high for the youth choir. Let's not raise the bar too high for the youth choir if we're not willing to come up to the bar ourselves. Don't raise it too high. I like what the brother said years ago. One of the best things you've ever said. You've said some great things, one of the best things you ever said. Don't fill them prescription bottles too full because you may have to take some. I like that. I like that a lot. How did those children, please tell me after church, how did those children walk and end up walking in truth? How did they end up walking in truth? Maybe they had a daddy walk in truth. And maybe they had a mama that walked in truth. If this was an NIV, and it's not, and it never will be, never will be, but if it was an NIV, it'd say, I rejoice greatly when I found of thy children walking in social media. That's what it'd say. Say, you know when you you know you know when you're doing better. Tell me that phone again. You know when you're doing better. I'll just keep it for right now. You know when you're doing better. Let me tell you when you're doing better. Let me tell you. Let me give you a little hint when you're doing better. When it comes across the screen, it says your screen time for this week is down from what it was last week. You're doing better then. You're doing better. You're doing better. You know what the truth is? I know you're going to judge me. I know you are. It's all right. It's all right. I'll, I'll calm down here in a minute. You know what the truth is? What I, the things I described to you, kids getting in the car right after school, kids getting up as soon as they get to come to the, there ain't no breakfast table anymore. It's Pop-Tarts or nothing. I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, you forget, but it's, it's pop tarts or nothing. I mean, you know, it's candy bar or nothing. You know, whatever. That's your business. But you know, at least every now and then, please, under God, 
Fry some bacon, make some eggs, please. Please make some biscuits, please. Somebody's hungry, say amen. So, uh, you know, them kids, as soon as they get in the car, and, and, and you know I guarantee you I've read somebody's title clear. I guarantee you come to the supper table. I guarantee you, kids. You don't even have the decency to put it down and have a family conversation with mom and dad. Tell me about your day. They don't even hear you. They, tell me about your day. Huh? Huh? What, are you a mule? Huh? 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 So, well, what we need to do? You put that phone down and you turn it off. Your mother has got pork chops. Somebody say amen. Right. Your mother's got your mother's got Taco Bell. <laughs> your mother has went by and picked up Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now you put that phone down, we got a pizza on the way. Your mother, for the first time in a month, has got pork chops, rice, and gravy, succotash. Some of you don't even know what that is because you don't cook enough. Go look it up. Succotash, all right? Your mother's got homemade biscuits with butter and honey, and she's made a pineapple upside down cake, and we got sweet southern tea with ice cube and plenty of sugar. You put that phone down and enjoy a meal and tell us about your day, you donkey. Say amen. That's what needs to happen. Michelle yeah. right. right. Menez, are you woman enough to let that happen? I mean, I'm serious. You, you carry a big stick? No. I mean, but you're the boss at your house. You're the boss at your house. All right, all right. Well, if that scenario plays out, whether it's that one or the other one, you just tell them, listen, the man just preached, and this is the way it's going to be. I've got Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to put that phone down. Could have said I got bluegrass barbecue. By the way, that's good stuff. I mean, it's really good. It really is good. Could I go ahead and tell you a little encouragement right here? We was coming through the country last night and saw a barbecue place. And I'm not even going to tell you who said it. You know what the brother said while we was in the vehicle together going up to the funeral home? You know what he said? He said, I'm just going to be honest with you. He said, you're going to be hard pressed to beat bluegrass barbecue. Yeah. That's what he said. Lower the price a little bit and we'll be back. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Cindy, Cindy, don't, don't get them. You ain't got no bathroom break, sister. Just, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. No, I tell you honestly, when I go in there, it's, it's here, try this rib. I, I, I'm the rev, so you can't try this. You must bring me rib and, and big old thing of banana pudding. I like it. I like it. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you. I mean it. Thank you for your kindness. Like produces like. Devotion produces devotion. Separation produces separation. Dedication produces dedication. Consecration produces consecration. In other words, my point and my very just, I don't, all I have is a verse. All I have is a verse. We, we, we've got to show them something. We've got to show them something. got to show them something. It's got to be consistent. It has to be consistent. Now, I, I know you see, you see all that? <laughs> that, that that's my message. <laughs> but I, I haven't even preached it. I want to say this and I'm finished. You listen close. We only have one chance at this. Ben, your, your children are little. Well, Emma's, what, 13, 12, going on 16? I hope not. You only have one chance, Ben, one. That's it, one chance. And then they're grown, and they start making their decisions, 
and start short, charting the course of their life. As a parent, as a parent, and, a, and I'm talking to the grandparent, as a grandparent, you ought to pour your life. You should pour your life and do everything in your power to ensure that your children walk in truth. No sacrifice is too little or too much. No sacrifice is too much. Time invested, it's worth it. Somebody help me. Money spent on the Lord's work, it's worth it. Faithfulness to God's house, and boy, isn't that something. Faithfulness to God's house, hey, it's worth it. It's worth it. Standards, standards, it's worth it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Clean living, it's worth it. Broken friendships with people that want nothing but carnality in the world, it's worth it. Supporting your children's spiritual endeavors, it's worth it. Back and listen, if we would show as much passion to back them spiritually as we back them in every other area of life. And listen, let me say this for all you that misunderstood the preacher. There's nothing wrong with some of those other areas of life as long as that's not the priority. It can't be the priority. But if we'd show as much passion backing them about spiritual matters, Riley, as we do the other areas of life, then I'm telling you, it'll send a strong message to our children. As a parent, as a grandparent, is it your goal? Is it your plan? Is it your dream that your children walk in truth? Let's bow our head and let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, help me as a father still, my wife as a mother. Lord, now up in years, grandparents, God, to these little girls, Lord Jesus, help us to keep our priorities right, our desires right, our dreams, our aspirations, our longings, our prayers, our clean living. Help us, Lord, when we have to bring correction, to bring correction. Help us, Lord, to realize the emphasis shouldn't be on social media. God, help us, Lord, that we train a generation that their emphasis wouldn't be on social media. Help us all as parents and grandparents. Bless our young people. Meet their needs as well. We'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. We're standing. We're singing.